Ukraine has changed war as we know it. They were the first country to really use drones in a lethal way, and they're using it at another level that I don't think we've ever seen before, to the point to where other countries are learning the tactics that Ukrainians are using so they can study them so that if their country ever goes to war, they know what they're doing or how to use this equipment. And what just happened yesterday is something that Ukraine, I mean, they've taken it to yet again another level. Since Russia's invasion of Ukraine, Ukraine has been using thousands of drones, all of them for different things, some for recon, some of them point of view drones, some of them are kamikaze drones. There are so many different uses for these drones. And they, after a while, realized that, hey, we need to produce our own drones at home, mostly because some parts are hard to come by. Some other parts, we need to go really, really far distances and like a DJI drone with a 32 minute long battery is not gonna be able to go there. And just recently, we know they released their own kind of paper slash cardboard drone, which can go pretty far, about 350 kilometers even further. But up until a month ago, Ukraine had a drone that we didn't even know about, which can do about 850 to 900 kilometers. And they're learning that, hey, with a drone with long distances, we can really cut Russia where it hurts. Remember that Russia has to pay for all of their weapons, things from North Korea or other countries. And they do that by whatever money they get from selling oil and gas. So Ukraine said from the get-go, we have to go after these oil refineries. Because if we're able to take these off, then Russia is not making any more oil or getting any more money. So for the past month, they've been going after all these refineries and they're doing a great job. As of today, it's estimated about 13 to 15% of Russia's threshold of producing oil has been cut. That is big. That's a lot of money that Russia will not have now to fund their war in Ukraine. But Ukraine knows that there's only so many places they can target within that 850 to 900 kilometer range. Well, now they have something brand new that can go much further. Just, I would say, yesterday, Ukraine had hit another oil refinery. And there really wasn't much news about it. It was kind of just like, hey, they hit another one. It's the third largest in Russia. But then you read it was 1,200 kilometers away. You're saying that is a massive amount of space. And it's true. That is a very long distance to send a drone undetected and to hit a target. Now, of course, Russia said that, no, they, they were shot down before they got there. And Ukrainians said, no. Not true, and we have proof. Ah. You won't. We don't have video of them hitting the refinery, but we do have video of them hitting something else. In that same area, it's been shown that a drone targeted a drone facility. Russia makes many of the drones. The Shahid drones are the ones we're talking about. They were getting them direct from Iran, but then Iran kind of showed them how they're able to build them on their own. So they buy the parts, they build them in Russia, and then of course they bring them to the front lines and use them in nightly attacks against Ukraine. But Ukrainian forces realize that, hmm, if they have these factories far away and we quote unquote can't hit them what is it or what could we do to hit them and get away with it and so they developed something new this right over here is a lightweight aircraft something that you would think of like a Cessna uh, and this is a Ukrainian kind of its own type Ukrainians were able to put X amount of pounds of munitions on here, hook it up to like a drone kind of, I don't know what kind of software, but obviously it's an AI software that's what, which allowed it to fly over to this area and then hit a target. So this is the video that the Ukrainians released showcasing what they used and the aftermath to say to Russia, you're lying to your people. We hit the target. 
let's jump back to this for a second. This is so ingenious that it just makes it go, wait, what? If it was a regular drone, say, flying from Ukraine into somewhere deep into Russia, usually the Russians, just like Ukrainians, they know the drone is coming and they're going to do everything possible to take down said drone. Or if it's a missile or you name it, they take it down. This means Ukrainians were able to outsmart the Russians by having this plane take off in Ukraine, fly at maybe 5,000 to 8,000 feet in the sky, travel, remember these things are slow, they're like oh, at 185 miles an hour, travel about 5 hours, about 1,200 kilometers into Russia, and then glide down and hit this building ingenious because that means ukraine learned that russia does not i mean they do not keep any eyes in the skies for regular planes like this and b there are massive holes in the russian air defenses so imagine ukraine's doing this russia does not have the technology right now now moving forward anytime that russia sees a small plane like this they're going to have to assume that it is a ukrainian drone and that just makes your mind go kind of crazy. They're going to be screwing with the Russians' heads for quite some time. Now, at 1,200 kilometers, you're talking about a massive reach deep into Russia. That means oil refineries, factories, repair shops, even facilities that fix up all these tanks. They are now all in the scope of Ukrainian attacks. Now, obviously, this is the first time that they have publicly used this kind of drone, at least the first time they've been photographed using it. But I expect that moving forward, they're going to be doing this more often. It also makes you wonder what other technology Ukrainians are working on. We do know they have other Neptunes they're working for the land. We know there's another kind of drone they're working on, which is not public as of yet. And they're working on another kind of mid-range kind of missile, something that could be something related to a Neptune, but a little bit further in distance. I have to say, from the beginning, when Ukraine wasn't getting any weapons from anyone, they had to adapt. And as this war is progressing, as Russia is continuing their attacks for no reason whatsoever, Ukrainians are still adapting. They're moving technology forward to a point to where it's kind of scary. I mean, to have a technology like this is kind of old school, but not at the same time. Because things like this existed back during the 50s and the 60s. It just, they haven't been used recently. Technology has improved so much to where I'm sure they just told this where to go and it did it on its own. No one's flying it. In the sense of, you know, maybe having someone like here in America, we have someone who's like in Arizona flying some of the, uh, the US drones overseas. And so... Something like this is so ingenious, knowing that the Russians would just think this is just a regular passenger plane and taking it to a target and taking it out and A, proving to Russia that their air defenses are awful and B, proving Russia wrong after they said there was no damage when clearly, clearly this facility right here got hit hard. And this is not like a, a bunker, this is like a regular building. So it's like a, a plane hitting a building, big explosion. This facility, it is toast. So, a lot has been learned by this. We also don't know how many facilities that Russia is using to make drones. So, we could see Ukraine sending more of these into Russian airspace more often than not. But let me know what you think about this in the comment section below. I just, once again, find it extremely interesting that Ukraine has been able to adapt from using the smaller kamikaze drones to something like this to hit military installations. And that's one thing I want you to keep in mind is that a lot of people are like, oh, well, Ukraine's doing bad things like Russia. No, no. Russia is targeting civilians, like what happened in Dnipro today. Okay. Ukraine is going after military installations that Russia is using to make weapons to use in Ukraine and is cutting off Russia's money machine, the oil. So anyway, let me know what you think in the comment section below. And I want to thank you for joining me. Please go ahead and subscribe to me here on YouTube because we really don't know what the future of TikTok is going to hold. And hopefully here we could do more longer videos. Anyway, I'm Joey. I'll see you later. Bye.